we launched this product a year ago at the Commercial Vehicle Show. Um, so I'll very quickly take you through what it actually is. Um, but then I'd like to share with you some of the learnings that, that we've had over this last year, putting this technology into highly unionized environments, mainly in public transport, and all of the organizational change and stuff like this that has to happen in order for the technology to be a success. So firstly, what, what is it? If you aren't aware of it, basically it's technology that, that detects fatigue and distraction in your, uh, your driver fleet. And it does that by measuring things like eye closure and yawning, uh, distraction, looking out the side windows, looking down at your lap, all of that sort of stuff. We have various parameters on there that allow us to set the length of time that someone has their eyes closed to define what is actual sleep or micro sleep and also speed that the vehicle is traveling at because you don't want to be setting off false alarms and basically pissing off your drivers when they're not doing anything bad. So we can detect these things and what do we do about it once we've detected them? Basically we, we alert the driver in real time that they've been falling asleep, wake them up and ensure that they've been woken up. If it's something like distraction when they're looking out a side window, we have an audible alarm that basically beeps and tells them, hey, you haven't been looking out the, the front window for more than four seconds, so pay attention to the road ahead. This is what it looks like. This is an example of a coach driver in the States. It's looping here, so you'll see what happens, basically how quickly she, she falls asleep, and then you can feel the alarm, and you can see the alarm vibrating her face, and you can see the expression on her face after that alarm's gone off, and that's of relief. So basically when that happens to you as a driver, you haven't realized you've been falling asleep, you get woken up and it's like, thank goodness that thing has just saved me there. So what do we do? We first of all stick it into a, a representative number of vehicles in a fleet and then test it to make sure that it's working properly and it's calibrated right. And it shows up some really bad examples in the very first day. This one was day one of a fleet out of Spalding and this guy's falling asleep. It's the middle of the night, he's fighting fatigue and he's trying to get to his break time. But he's not going to call the dispatch guys and say, guys, I'm really knackered. I need to pull, a, pull, a, pull over and, and get a break. He's just going to fight it. And that's what happened there. He's fought it and fought it. And actually, this didn't result in an accident. So you can spot drivers like this. You can find out. You can have them back into the depot, have a conversation with them to say, well, what's going on in your private life? What's going on in your work life? Have you just come back from holiday? What could be the reason for this? Because genuinely, this particular driver wasn't aware that he was falling asleep. And this is what happens when you switch the alarms on. So if you think back to that guy that's falling asleep multiple times, and in fact, he fell asleep for roughly 1.75 kilometers over half an hour in the middle of the night and didn't crash. If you can remove all of that repeat offenses, you can drop the amount of fatigue and amount of risk that's out there on the road dramatically. These are the statistics that we typically see from customers dropping around 90% of the events of fatigue on the road. Now, it's not removing the tired driver. The tired driver is there. There's nothing technology can do about that. But what it can do is it can fix the repeat offenses. So once the driver is aware that he's been falling asleep, he'll then self-medicate. He'll do something about it. And he's also aware that someone back at base knows that he's been falling asleep and he's probably going to have a conversation with them tomorrow. So these are the sort of things that we start to see once you're getting big data about your fleet. This is representing around a million uh, distraction events and around a quarter of a million of fatigue events. And what you can see there is a spread across the day. No real surprise there in terms of distraction. You can see when the road traffic increases, there are more things to look at. There are more things that will cause a, a driver to look at the side windows or whatever. But what's quite surprising is fatigue to me. Fatigue is almost flat across the day. You'd expect if you've got night drivers, it's going to peak in there or, or anecdotally it peaks at four o'clock in the afternoon. There doesn't really seem to be anything there from the big data that we have. So you see these big macro um, trends emerging, but you also see micro trends emerging. This is an example of a, of a haulier uh, in the east coast of England. And what's really surprising here, of the, the two things that are highlighted, one, he's only around half an hour or an hour into his shift. And number two, it's only at half past 12 at lunchtime and he's clearly falling asleep. Now what that does once you see it, is you can then have a conversation with your drivers and you can see trends. And what was happening at this particular depot was that the drivers were all meeting at a social event, basically, having their lunch. So they bring the Tupperware container in, they'll have the pasta or whatever, they'll eat, they'll go out on the road, half an hour later, an hour later, all the blood's gone from their head down to their stomach and they fall asleep. So the, the management there now had evidence that this was happening because it wasn't resulting in crashes, have evidence that it's happening, and then you can have a conversation with your drivers and say, are you aware that coming in and having this social intercourse with your other drivers there, it's a good thing, but it's a bad thing if you use it as the time to have your main meal of the day. So please cut down and maybe spread your meals across because this is what's happening to you. 
The other thing I would say in our, our key learnings is involve the unions. If you have unions in there, if you just have work councils, but involve them right from the, the get go. The real successes that we've had in places like Transport for London and all the major coach companies and bus companies across the UK is you have the unions in the very first meeting. We're also working with the trams in, in Croydon and that's Aslef, so that's a particularly tough union to be working with in the railway industry. Get them in right from the beginning. This is an example that was done by RAP, RATP Dev uh, who run London United for Transport for London and you can really see this is a poster that goes up in the, the mess room for the driver so they can all see it. There's also letters sent out to all of the drivers that are signed both by the management and by the Unite convener at the site. And this communications goes out to the, the driver's families as well. What I think the key learnings for me here, and do you mind if I'll read them, um, that the technology gives you real insights to what you've got in your driver fleet. Things that you never knew were there, but there comes a responsibility with that. It's like doing a health and safety check. If you find somewhere that you're not compliant, you're duty bound to do something about it. It's exactly the same once you get insights into the, the physical condition and the driver behaviors uh, in your fleet. You have to do something about it. The other thing I would say um, is that key learnings for us is don't put it in just as a technology that fixes fatigue and distraction. Put it in there as a driver welfare scheme that involves all sorts of other things. You have to be prepared that you may find people with sleep apnea, so what are you going to do about it? When you're working with the unions, one of the things that they do put on you is the diligence to make sure that all the processes and all the what ifs are covered before you actually roll out. And for all that slows down the process of getting kit in, it really helps in making sure that it's in and it's stable and it's robust and everyone buys into it. The last thing I would say here is if possible, connect with the driver's partners. If possible, send out some mailings to a household because when you're out there on the road by yourself, you do your own risks, you take your own risks. But if you really want to get support from the household, if you like, then they need to know about it. And I'm going to end with a quote here that comes from the Croydon Trams. You can read this yourself rather than me turning around and reading it. But there's three key elements to this one. The first one is that the, the management and the drivers are now having a conversation because both know that both know that the driver was tired. So they are coming proactively and talking about fatigue and distraction. The second one is that the driver are also concerned that they are setting things off because it's actually bugging them. And it's also causing them to have conversations with their management. So they are self-fixing. And what we have seen in Croydon is that the guys used to drive along really sloppily, leaning back, just one-handed uh, on the, the throttle, basically. And they're now all sitting upright and sitting, and they're, they're taking more care of their own health. And the final thing I would say here is that the driver's partners are taking responsibility for the drivers coming on to shift in a fit condition to drive before they weren't aware, and because there was no evidence that drivers were falling asleep, there was no kind of thought to, well, what's going on at home? Am I on a PlayStation late at night? Have I just come back from holiday? Am I looking after the kids when my wife's working or the other way around? All of these things are kind of separated from the work environment. Once you've got this conversation going on with your drivers, the work environment and the home environment come together and they self-medicate. Okay, thank you very much.